just released in theaters, brand new, 30 years after the fact, long overdue, but is it any good? And or can you or do you find yourself currently in the gray area as far as, you know, something like Rotten Tomatoes? The critics are panning the shit out of this thing. The fans are loving the shit out of this thing. So who do you side with? Which side do you lean towards? That and more as we get into this episode. Now listen, first off and foremost, last episode was the review of the old, the first time around. They did this thing called a Mario Brothers movie on Nintendo via, um, I forget who the fuck put it out. It doesn't matter because the less we acknowledge and or embrace the thought and or the existence of the old Mario Brothers movie, honestly, the better because it sucked. As confirmed last episode, I did. If you want to check that out, it's on YouTube as well. Episode 63 of the old Mario Bros. movie. This one, mm, let's just leave judgment towards the end of the episode. So we got something to talk about and or you listen to. And feel free to jump in on the comments. You know, wherever you feel like on YouTube. YouTube.com backslash who this is one. And or the audio version wherever you get your podcast from. And whatever platform you choose, of course. Speaking of platform jumping like that. Mario gets busy jumping all over the place. Yahoo, wee, ha, ha, ho. All over the place, all over the Mushroom Kingdom and Brooklyn as well. In this movie, alongside his bro Luigi, basically the premise is. Now listen, here's the first thing I'll get into. First and foremost, the movie already gets off to a good ass start as far as already being way better than the 93 version is that. Remember the 93 version if you ever watched it. And if you did, like I had to, I'm sorry. But if you ever watched the 93 version, how they transport themselves into the Mushroom Kingdom or Dino Hatton, like a futuristic, um, desolate version of Manhattan, but run by dinosaurs and humanoids and a, a whole lot of fungus covering everything around. But if you ever watched that one, they pretty much fall face first into like a transforming rock. Like if you play, if you ever played Mario 64, how you used to have to jump into the Paytons to get anywhere or to the next level, kind of like that. They had to fall face first into a rock. That's how they did it back when, which made no sense back when. But who knows? Maybe that's what inspired Mario 64. You jump into the Paytons or like the hidden walls and shit for Mario. <clears throat> who knows? To be honest. But at least the first thing they get right in this new Mario Brothers movie, the animated one, obviously made for kids and or family viewing in its entirety, they jump into a warp pipe. No, actually, they get sucked into a warp pipe because you do jump into pipes when you play the game, but you also can't, you can jump on top of the pipe and just stay there too, but you have to also press an action button to actually get doop, boop, 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 sucked into the pipe and go from point A to point B or the end of the pipe, right? So they got that right. Basically, all it is in this version is Mario and Luigi are brothers. Obviously, they're the Mario Bros. Mario Mario, Luigi Mario. They're in Brooklyn. They started up their own plumbing business. They get their first job based off their commercial that they paid for out of their own life savings, which looks terrible. But it's very endearing. And for anyone old enough to remember, kids probably won't know what the fuck's even going on. Or they'll just comment how horrible or how, like corny or mid the raps are but you'll recognize the super mario super show rap from the intro of that old show the super mario super show with uh, rest in peace captain lua bano and i forget the name of the guy who did luigi but you know shout out to him also remember that rap that's what they paid for off that commercial they get one job it goes horrible they mess up the whole fucking modern day looking ass gentrified but black owned new apartment condo building they work for they go back home defeated. Mama's proud of her boys regardless because of how much they failed, you know, on day one of their dream job. As far as owning their own plumbing business is concerned, she's still, you know, proud of them regardless. But Papa is the real one. Papa Mario's a real one. Shitting on Mario pretty much saying it's dumb that you wanted to pursue your dream being a plumber of all things. And of course, you got white gloves, which they actually hint to as far as like why they wear white gloves this whole time. He explains it's so they can stand out, they can be unique in their own thing, what they do, which makes a lot of sense. It explains some of the minor details as far as like never having a real true blue backstory to why are the Mario Brothers, who are the Mario Brothers and such, right? You never get any real solid explanation besides 
Mario jumps on bricks, he gets power-ups, he saves the princess again from the clutches of Bowser, or does she really want to be saved? Because maybe Bowser's packing that BBC. So once they, you know, have the bad first day of, you know, having a new job and shit, yeah, they dream about doing something, they see on the news all of a sudden that, of all places, Brooklyn, Brooklyn is underwater, and funny enough, they live in the part of Brooklyn that's right by the bridge, so... Not only are they already going underwater, they're by the water. So oddly enough, ironically enough, they're underwater by the water already. So that's an easy leak to happen. Maybe not so easy to fix. So I'm guessing probably if they're by the Brooklyn Bridge, they're by that area, whatever. No, actually, from the I don't know Brooklyn like that. I stay out of Brooklyn as best I can. I'm from Queens. So it looks like they may be downtown-ish Brooklyn. By the water as in by the Verrazano Bridge instead of like the Brooklyn Bridge. Who knows? I'm just guessing over here. But they got to go. They want to go and be heroes. They want to go fix the leak. And when they go underground, underneath Brooklyn of all places, they find a big green... Well, sorry. Mario finds a green... No, actually, I'm sorry. They do go together. That That is how, how it happens. They both go together to fix the job themselves and be heroes. Luigi goes in first. He's like creeping around and wondering what's a big ass green pipe doing here. He gets whoop, sucked right in. Mario's confused. He don't know where his brother went. He goes in right after him and he gets whoop, sucked right in too. But as they go through the pipes and transport themselves into the Mushroom Kingdom, Luigi goes one way to the uh, Dark Lands, I think it's called, Forgotten Lands, whatever. And then Mario ends up in the actual Mushroom Kingdom. So, of course, Mario, yay, and Luigi, nay, as far as where they end up. So from there to split up. And basically from there, it's kind of like the premise of any other Mario movie. Yes, they're absolutely right, whoever said that. Fans and or critics alike. It is basically any plain Jane ass Mario movie you played up until now. Mario's a hero. Mario saves a day. Except this time, the only difference is everybody's working together to save Luigi. And no, it's not like Luigi's Mansion where Luigi's the only one there and he's the hero fighting against ghosts. No. Luigi is Princess Peach pretty much in this role without a dress on. But it's Mario, Peach, and Toad of all things, and Donkey Kong later on as he joins in, that has to save the day as far as saving Luigi from the clutches of Bowser. Which, I'm surprised they haven't done that till, if they haven't I mean. Why they haven't done that till now? Like why is ba Bowser so obsessed with only kidnapping Princess Peach of all things? Which is explained and I guess we'll go into right now. So. Bowser is played by Jack Black. Um, I feel great job. Made Bowser really fun. I could have done a little less without the super simp angle as they painted Bowser to be. They really painted Bowser into this corner of him just being a low-key, obsessive, compulsive simp. Which, if you think about it, might explain why he's always trying to kidnap and or steal or take Peach as hostage. I would have thought this whole time, because of course there's no backstory to it, I would have thought this whole time he's doing it because Prince uh, Princess Peach wants to be kidnapped this whole time by Bowser because he's probably got the BBC, he's got a big scaly long cock that she really enjoys and really they're just cuckolding Mario this whole time to thinking the prince is in another castle, but really the princess is changing a different lingerie that Bowser really gets turned on by, and they're trying to get away from you long enough so that before you catch them, they're probably just worn out after a long ass weekend of sex. You know, dragon, humanoid sex, if anything, too. And then Mario eventually saves the day only because they got tired, they wanted to be caught, and before, you know, Princess Peach gets a yeast infection, obviously. That's what I would have thought this whole time. I, I know I'm thinking too much stupidly into it. But then the movie really portrays him as nothing more than a simp who's like enamored, obsessed with Peach. There is the very catchy, awesome song, Peaches, 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 Peaches. If you want to watch it with your kids and or yourself, it's most likely stuck in your head as it's been in mine. And also he did a video for it separately, Jack Black, in the Bowser co uh, costume, cosplay, whatever. Playing at the piano, really acting out his emotions as would Bowser, as we saw in the movie, via Peach, and what he really feels about her this whole time. So they turn Bowser into a simp, which I'm not going to criticize, but it does make it hard to believe that Bowser is a villain any further, even though 
literally every game you play with Mario and with Bowser as the bad guy, Bowser has to lose. He can't win. The, the game can't end with Bowser winning after all or Bowser finally killing Mario or eating him or setting him on fire because of his fire breath and shit. And despite the fact he's oversized, overpowering Mario in every way, shape, form possible too, it doesn't really make sense in that lane either. I get it, but now he's a simp. So now whenever we see him in the next embodiment of being the villain of the next Mario game, will it be Bowser or are they setting us up for probably somebody else? Maybe, I mean, in the sense of a movie, there's definitely going to be sequels. That's a given because of the success I just read earlier today. I think it's... um. Was it three day opening weekend? No, actually they've been open since Wednesday, cause right April fifth. They're expected to make like two hundred plus million already in that first weekend, which is really good, and that's already almost a quarter of a billion. Which I'll put it out there. I'll, I'll probably make that safe bet if anything. I can definitely see this making a billion in the box office. Not necessarily because it's a great film, as we'll discuss later on why it's not great. But it is catering to those nostalgic of Mario games of the past. Grew up obviously like I did and a lot of other people did with Mario. And little kids too. There's no defeating the bag that comes with catering to the kids. There's no defeating that. That's the biggest bag you can get if you play it safe and PG like that. But we're not doing that over here. This is who has been watching. Episode 64. Just like Mario 64, just like Nintendo 64, episode 64, the spoiler review of the Super Mario Brothers movie. Now listen, besides the fact that Bowser's now officially a simp, according to, I guess, unofficial, now existing, now more fleshed out Mario Universe lore, there's that. But again, I gotta give Jack Black a lot of credit. He was really funny throughout. I wish there was more of a balance at the end of the day of him being evil and a simp, so an evil simp, but the simp ratio really outweighs the evilness of Bowser we've come to know till this day. And again, I know Bowser's a really unsuccessful villain as far as actually getting the job done. He can kidnap Peach, but he can't really keep or hold on to Peach or at least brainwash her enough or gaslight her enough to think, hey, you should be with me instead of waiting for Mario to save you this whole time. But again, another one of many uh, failures courtesy of Bowser. What are you going to do about that? But good, I'd say good job to Jack Black. He did it really fun. At some points, it really is just Jack Black doing his own thing in Bowser cosplay. But you know what? It's still fun. He really owned up to the role and played it well. Uh, some other things now. There's, I, I noticed this one thing about the film, actually, which is odd enough. It is a kid's film at the end of the day, let's be honest. Because it is rated, I want to say PG. It should be, it might be a G. I'd say probably PG. Does it need a PG? I don't think so. But funny enough, 35 minutes into the movie, which is only about an hour and, I think just under an hour and 30, but all that time the movie's playing, it whizzes by. You don't even notice it really. And then you're stuck wondering, wait, that's it already? It's done? Holy shit. But 35 minutes in, death has been mentioned three times of all things in a kid's film, which I'm not offended. I'm not shocked by that, nothing. But I'm just surprised of all things, the first animated Mario movie, and it's made primarily for kids to enjoy and to shut them up for at least an hour and a half, that is mentioned three times, as in the very first line spoken by Bowser, funny enough, as he's the first thing, first person you see on screen. Remember the trailer with the big airship, he drops down, he like makes his way to the Penguin Kingdom and shit? The very first line spoken, and we remember from the trailer, open the gates, but it's it was actually cut for the trailer. The full length version is open the gates or die to all the little penguins and shit as they defend themselves. That opening was cute, but I was like, oh wow, they cut that out of the trailer. Now I wonder how, could you keep that in the trailer and still promote it as a kid's movie? Or did they do the smart thing and just say, let's cut out the or die part, leave that for the movie and make it seem like it's really catered to kids. Because I think there's a lot of assumptions that this kid, this movie, based off the trailer alone, is going to be only for kids, based again off what we saw in the trailers. And also, I do hate that they kind of showed a lot of good parts in the trailer, leading up to the release of the movie. But that, that's another point aside. 35 minutes in, though. Three times already. Death is mentioned in the movie. So, 
That got my head scratching a little bit like, okay, they did the smart play by leaving that for the movie for it to be watched first. So you realize, oh, death is often mentioned. Okay. Mario doesn't like mushrooms. And it's a very funny thing they point out and reference to a lot in the beginning because mama serves pasta on, you know, whatever night of the week dinner it is after they fail their first job. And it's a big bowl of pasta and it's drowning in mushrooms, which I like mushrooms, sauteed you know however you mix in the pasta soup and such but mario of all things all we know mario for is eating and living off of mushrooms mario's practically a vegan he gets that vegan protein in him at all time via mushrooms right that's how he stays so sturdy and so circular and so low to the ground with a low center of gravity right and he's shaped like a mushroom if you really think about it because like short stocky stemmy legs and like a I would say muffin top, but I guess mushroom top sort of build to his belly and shit. No, he hates mushrooms of all things. He makes that clear the dinner table. He, he likes picks away the mushrooms and maybe eats a little bit of the pasta or whatever. After getting dissed by his own dad, so you know you're a fucking loser because you want to be a plumber from Brooklyn of all things. Loser! Kind of thing, you're ashaming me. But they, they reference that later on because he has to use obviously mushrooms as a power up to become big Mario, strong Mario, the Mario we've grown to know and love Mario. Living off of power-ups and or, you know, uppers, I guess you could say. Not the bag of mushrooms, not shrooms like you would do to get high on a weekend when you're lonely on, on Easter, I guess. But no, this is mushrooms and or endorse vegans to validate themselves further by saying, Look, Mario eats mushrooms and only lives on his mushrooms. He lives off vegan plant protein. Come on. How can you hate on us any further? We're validated now of all things via Mario. When he finally makes it to the Mushroom Kingdom castle, you know, Peach's home and house, accompanied by Toad after jumping around the Mushroom Kingdom and shit back and forth, whatever. She does say to him, okay, we'll save your brother. You come with me, but only if you can keep up with me and do what I can do and copy good old Peach, which Peach is, yeah, you know what? There was a lot of things as far as like people being upset, oddly enough too, about Peach just being like more forward with how she is and or literally she's a hero in her own sense too so she helped mario become super mario in this sense by teaching him about the power-ups and having him learn from her how to clear the obstacle course she set up for him so he can prove himself worthy of accompanying her to initially go speak to the rest of the kong kingdom donkey kong cranky kong and all of them to ask for their help because they got word that Bowser finally tore down through the fucking uh, Penguin Ice Kingdom and got the Superstar. And he was making his way towards the Mushroom Kingdom via his big ass floating island airship, right? So he finally does prove himself worthy, but after like a day and some change of like failing and failing at the obstacle course again, it's a really funny part. The only part I don't like is when he finally gets the one perfect practice run on the obstacle course is they rely on that one song I forgot who sang it, but I need a hero, which they used initially, I'd say perfectly in Shrek. I forget if it was one or two, one of those. But then every other movie felt the need to kind of copy it at some point too and do it to a lesser degree and extent. And here it just doesn't hit. That's the one negative I have from this film. The use of a lot of songs that we actually know from the 80s and or just after the time of the release of the first Mario um, Bros game is annoying because it's lazy at best. No Sleep Till Brooklyn was an easy, obvious choice. Anyone could have seen that coming from a mile away, but it's still kind of pleasant only because they still make it fun with like the parkouring through Brooklyn and the construction site and like, I think paying homage to the very first level of Super Mario Bros 1 as well as like, um, what's that game, Wrecking Crew as well. That wasn't too bad, but that could have been the only licensed song they would have used, and I would have been fine with it. But then they use I Need a Hero. Then they use, in the worst case example possible, uh, what's their name? I forget the name of the band, but Take On Me. Of all things, when they finally reach uh, the Kingdom of Kong, and of all things, I didn't know this, I don't know if it was ever explained at all in any of the games and or let alone Mario Kart, but apparently the Kongs, Donkey Kong, Cranky Kong, all of them, were the ones that invented the carts. So we got them to thank for Mario Kart, so why is it Mario Kart, Donkey Kong Kart in that case? If the movie says 
And the movie's very loyal to the source material. Very rare to see something that wasn't a movie first being so loyal to the origin source material. Why isn't Don uh, Mario Kart Donkey Kong Kart instead? And why do we have to wait? Well, no, Donkey Kong wasn't the first Mario Kart, so I guess maybe that's compensation. So I hate to agree with the rest of the internet and or anyone else who's reviewed this movie, but it's hard to disagree. Uh, I wasn't a fan of Cranky Kong either. Fred Armesian, I think that's how you say his name, from SNL fame and a lot of other things he's done which he's been genuinely funny in. But this one sounded phoned in, this one sounded like, I hate to say, but maybe they caught him like mid-flu or chest congestion, whatever, and they said, you know what, we are so short on time and want to get it out by a certain date, we just need to record now, he just sounds legit cranky, but also like in agony, and or like, again, very heavily congested to do cranky, which, not the best choice, but also with that song Take On Me leading into like Cranky Kong, how he's voiced, it was kind of like, ah man, they really should have sat on this a little longer, just made some better choices as far as these two consecutive fails are concerned in the movie. But uh, yeah, Peach finally makes it to the Kong Kingdom, she has to confront the Kongs to basically get them to side with her so that they can both take on Bowser. Mario has to fight Donkey Kong, who is Cranky Kong's son in this case, in the Kong Stadium, Battlefield, whatever. Which, that scene was awesome. That was the first part of the movie that made me really, like, almost, um, not gripping my seat as in, like, in peril or distress, but more like, this looks so fucking awesome on the screen right now. Like, even if Donkey Kong doesn't make sense necessarily in the first Mario Bros. movie, the way they included him and incorporated him the whole time, especially in this fight scene between them, was great. I love this so much. I would go watch this again in theaters before it's out on streaming and whatever else, just for this part alone, and for the last battle too, uh, Mario Luigi vs. Bowser in Brooklyn of all places, which is awesome. So beautifully animated, that's a very big plus to the movie, and a very big advantage to it too. It's a very beautifully animated movie, overall, start to finish, from how they recreated Brooklyn in like, what it would look like in the animated Mario universe, to the Mushroom Kingdom, to all the lands we briefly get glimpses of as far as them traveling on route, or in route, excuse me, to the Kong Kingdom. And also, by the way, when you blink and you miss it, when they're in route to the Kong Kingdom, we get fucking Yoshis. We don't get a Yoshi, we get a whole fucking stampede of Yoshis rushing by across the water, but we don't get to see them up close. And I was like, Yoshi, I'm so excited, but Again, blinking you miss it, or not even like, yeah, it, it's really blinking you miss it, or you look like down into your tub of popcorn too long to see if it's still butter and salt in it, you look back up and you missed Yoshi. That's as fast as that like little glimpse went. Um, a whole rock concert and his master plan was, you know, underneath it all to really marry Princess Peach. So he's a bad guy. He destroyed a whole ice penguin kingdom and took them prisoners and keeps them dangling in like floating cages and shit, held up by chains, but deep down inside he's just a misunderstood deviant who wants to be loved and force that love out of someone who doesn't love him back. So he's literally the embodiment of like Sting and or the police every step you take, every breath you take, every move you make. I'll be watching you peaches, but it's a rock concert, he reveals his master plan, he burns one of his like Koopas um, because they question him and they ask why the fuck you want to do that basically you simp and he does immediately burn him alive so there's death on screen presumably he, he turns a Koopa into a dry bones basically uh, if that counts as death. I guess it does because dry bones don't die they just multiply and or you jump on them and they come back to life anyway. I, I forgot if you can completely defeat a dry bones. I think you need the, what is it, the tanuki tail and beat him with that or like the fireball. I forget, whatever, it's been too long. But then there's another part that really threw me off where uh, they catch one of the troopers, Koopa Troopers, catch Bowser and, oh God, I forgot his name, the the wizard one, uh, Kamek? I think Kamek. Right, right. They catch Bowser having Kamek cosplay as Peach, sitting at the piano, 
where he's working on his proposal speech, aka, I got you now, bitch. Will you marry me, by the way? Da 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 da, and all that too. With a, which it's a really cute and funny, like, you know, you make a guy really want to come out of his shell because he's a big ass turtle after all. So confirm he's not a dinosaur or dragon, he's a turtle above all else. The king of the Koopas, King Koopa. Remember that name for him? Yeah, before Bowser, before everyone started crying, it's Bowser. Whatever. That even solidifies more the fact that Bowser at the end of the day is a super duper simp. So it really adds more to the backstory of which was never ever explained why is bowser so up you know peach's taint to get a sniff of a fucking pussy like that and or why does he want her of all things so much so every game is basically the fucking thing kidnaps peach different way it's just better graphically detailed as far as the systems and the games are concerned over time but it's the same fucking premise now we get it and now it's kind of like, ah, man, they made him into a fucking simp of all things. And the funny thing is in theater, too, they were crying at that out loud, too, a lot. The young kids, the older people, well, the older people weren't saying simp. But the kids were like, simp, at Bowser, screaming at the screen like that. And I get it. It's like, wait a minute. It was never implied. This was never fucking the reason why. Bowser's just an asshole. Bowser's just, like, power hungry this whole time. But now they made him into a simp. So can Bowser really be taken serious as the bad guy in whatever next Mario movie we're getting because they hinted at it or at least Miyamoto did in like some interview like um, keep watching Nintendo Directs for more news on Mario games in the future basically right because there was no funny enough there was no Mario game tied into the release of the movie so maybe we're expecting a new Mario game soon enough I mean it's been a while since Odyssey and I haven't played that ever since I've been meaning to but I'll get to it eventually but there's that, uh, Rainbow Road, which is a scene, a part a lot of people really loved visually, I did too, really fun, necessary, I'd say so, yeah, just because I, I read people saying there should have been a Mario Kart movie, which I mean it could lead up to and build up to, but I think that'd be more of a short film or like maybe like a bonus thing they add on to like a dvd or if nintendo ever gets into streaming services which they will I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do maybe drop it that route because i want to say like a couple of months ago maybe even late last year 2022 there was news that nintendo bought some sort of animation studio uh not a well-known one but they bought their own animation studio with no real projects released or announced per se yet but I wouldn't be surprised if that's how we get eventually like a Nintendo streaming service for just Nintendo media stuff maybe they give us stuff we never expected or we can't find elsewhere on there exclusively and or a Star Fox movie a Metroid movie maybe uh, I think there was supposed to be a Zelda Netflix series but got cancelled I think so maybe we'll get it there instead I mean, because if you think about it too, I remember clearly, if you remember Wreck-It Ralph, love that movie by the way, also very cute and charming, John C. Riley and uh, my comedic crush for the longest time, Sarah Silverman, still a beautiful lady, according to me at least, I like her, she's always been funny to me and always been super attractive, right? But I remember reading after loving Wreck-It Ralph so much that Disney was working on getting bigger name characters in two and or landing, you know, the holy grail of them all, basically Mario, because we got Sonic, we got Dr. Eggman, we got fucking um, Zangief and Street Fighter, Bowser, so many others I can't really think of right now from different franchises. Sonic was a big enough get, even if he was kind of like a very brief, like, um, thing, pop-up, whatever, in the train station in the very first one, too. But I remember reading clearly, they were negotiating Disney and Nintendo, to get Mario in the second one, the sequel, which came out, I think, four or five years later, whatever. But I remember, I remember reading, they worked up to the point where they had agreed on it, Mario was going to be in the second one. But then Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph breaks the internet, turned into whatever it turned into, which was fun. It was still fine, but I'm still way more fond of the first one. But all we got from Mario was the question block the coin block and I always wondered what happened then but I think now it makes sense maybe 
this kind of coincided with the time, the release of Wreck-It Ralph 2, with the Mario Bros. movie already being in development or very early on, perhaps. So that's probably why they said, nope. After Bowser finally captures Peach, uh, I forgot to mention that ba Bowser does capture Peach again, as he does in the games, again he does in the movie, finally, and forces her to marry him unless she wants to see, like, Fried Toad, basically, get electrocuted to death or squished or whatever Kamek was doing to him. The wedding scene is great, too. There's a lot going on. Peach is a, the fucking hero throughout most of the movie, if not Mario, when Mario finally learns power-ups. There's a team-up with Mario and Donkey Kong who finally get along after fighting with each other to, like, take out a bunch of Koopa Troopers and everything else Bowser's thrown their way. We get fired Donkey Kong, who can throw fireballs. We get cat suit Mario. I forgot to mention that at the very end of the Donkey Kong vs. Mario fight, which is really cool to see. And I love that they paid tribute and respect to 3D Land like that, because another very fun, underrated, maybe easy game, but still a very fun game to play nonetheless. I love that it got its due uh, justice. Obviously, the Tanuki suit, iconic from 3 which is really fun. I'm surprised though, if they paid homage at all to Super Mario World, which I think musically, in the score they might have at some point, but I can't remember where. But I think the only kind of tip of the hat to Mario World for the Super Nintendo was probably the commercial when they had capes on and they would pretend flying on the little platform things holding them up, I think. Anyone else out there, feel free to correct me or like point out, yeah, they referenced Mario World by doing this specifically too. Um, wedding scene was great, really dramatic. <laughs> uh, there's on-screen death implied because what was really cool to see was King Boo and King Babam at the wedding, <laughs> as they would since, you know, evil supports evil, I think is one of them said. So they have to light King Babam on fire and set off his fuse and he's like so stubby and short on me, he can't reach the top of his crown to like get to the fuse and put it out. So at some point he just like gives up, puts his arms out and he blows up. So did he go up by suicide or did they kill him basically? Okay, there's death after all in the Super Mario Brothers movie. So you can't really complain about that. It, it, it's not really full on a kid's movie like that if they got on screen death, even if it's a made up character, not human and no guts or nothing, you know, flying all over the place after all it's just TNT or dynamite or whatever King Babam was made of but at least a proper uh, finally a proper use of a Babam because if you remember one of my main gripes with the old movie from 93 was that they used a tiny little fucking thing you could have stomped on size Babam that took like 5-10 minutes to get the Bowser's feet finally and blow up only then like on the spot this one they use the babam how they really would use a babam in the game. You set it on fire, or you light the fuse, I mean to say. It's got a very short window of time to actually go off, and when it goes off, it explodes. And of course, you took out the daddy, the god to the babams, the king babam of all things. You killed his ass on screen, Mario. So of course, that's fine. That's, that's fine and well. <laughs> that, that was funny though, how he dies. And again now, the final fight in Brooklyn, Mario Luigi vs. Bowser, it looks like all is lost, all hope is lost at least, because Bowser's just like straight owning everybody. Donkey Kong is able to take him on, size and strength wise, but Bowser's just too powerful and too emotionally disturbed by the fact that they interrupted and ruined his wedding, so now he is a bad guy that's been hurt, that's been blue balled and or blue shelled, and now on a rampage ready to fucking destroy the Mushroom Kingdom, whatever universe he goes to, and now where he's at, literally, Brooklyn, at all cost. Mario's getting beat up, getting the shit kicked out of him. Luigi's being a coward, he jumps right into a dumpster as they teleport back into Brooklyn. They, of course, they have to have the scene where Mario's doubting himself. He gets, like, Hadouken into whatever he got right back into the pizza shop uh, where they go to locally. The video uh, playing on the TV as he's like, you know, holding his bruised arm and his face is all lumped up and shit. Of course, it's his commercial playing that reminds him to be super. So he says, finally, I'm not going to quit. I need to get back into this shit. Laces up his boots, gets back into the battle, and he sees a star. They both go, he goes after it. He's not able to make it. 
Luigi finally pops out of the dumpster because he sensed his brother being brave again instead of Luigi being a pussy hiding in the dumpster. They go out together, they get the power star together, and we get Invincible Mario and Luigi, which lasts way too long if you remember the game like that for the power star to be lasting like that. They get it though, and they're fucking owning Bowser left and right, just beating the shit out of him. They pay homage to Mario 64 with two players grabbing him by the tail and swinging him out the, the fucking vicinity immediately. We didn't get the so long gay Bowser, but you know what? It's a kid's movie. We couldn't get that, I guess. Maybe it was a PG-13. But then again, if we got PG-13 one, we'd probably get a remake of the 93 version, which no one wants ever again. They beat the shit out of Bowser. He's defeated. He's done for. He's uh, force-fed a blue mushroom, which makes him shrink down to mini size. They put him in a glass jar. There he is. Movie's done pretty much. And from right there, the movie's done because then Mama Mario comes out. Oh, my boy. Isn't my beautiful boy? Is Papa Mario comes out like, oh, Mario, I know you could do it, you little piece of shit. God damn it, you did something worthwhile with your life. You're a hero in Brooklyn of all things. Yay. So that means you're going to get your picture put up in a fucking pizza shop. And that's the biggest thing you'll do in your fucking life. Unless, as they do, they move to the Mushroom Kingdom. Where they're heroes. Where they're towering over the rest of the fucking toads roaming the rest of the mushroom kingdom so who would pass up that chance right to be standing and towering over a whole population full of people and you're a giant compared to them and the only person bigger than you is your brother and or the princess you are flirting openly with like that and she's feeling it too so why not mario i don't fucking blame you and she's a human she's not like a half human half toad mushroom person no she's a human from another galaxy that as they implied, of course they gotta show Baby Peach stumbling into the Toad Mushroom Kingdom and she became their princess because she outgrew them by the time she was done shitting her diapers pretty much. And they live happily ever after. Uh, Bowser's stuck in a cage, in, sorry, in a, yeah, in a little bird cage with his piano playing away peaches, peaches, peaches. And he's still simping after Peach, after he got force fed a blue mushroom to shrink down and be kept that way unless he gets hit. If he gets hit just once with the blue, even after eating the blue mushroom, he'll just go back to big old Bowser. But, you know, they're probably handling him with like gloves of all things as carefully as they can to make sure no one touches him. And they probably got it written on the door leading into the room where he's caged up and don't touch him. Of all things, don't touch him. Cause then he gets hit, he goes back to being big and we're all fucking dead. But at least you got Mario and Luigi on call right now too, but then we don't want to go through all that all over again. You never know what Bowser, right? But he's still simping after her after all this time, even after, you know, being shrunken down, being defeated and being humiliated and being told to his face by her. Not like someone played telephone with Bowser and said, oh, you know what Peach said? She would never marry you, you big fucking dinosaur fuck. No, she's like, I would never marry you. You're evil, you're demented, you're a dinosaur. Your big scaly cock would ravage me from the inside. And I'd have internal bleeding and yeast infections going on all day. So what fucking advantage do I get out of that? Something like that, right? But he's still simping at the end of the day. That they do at least pay homage and respect to Charles Martinet. And the reason why Mario and or Chris Pratt doesn't have the yahoo, wee hee, ha ha hoo voice throughout the fucking movie is that when they filmed the commercial, he really amped up the accent, and he does do the accent. Oh, uh, you know, the, uh, call up the Super Mario Brothers, a plum in the service, for your, your pipes are getting fixed, or whatever, for the commercial. But then they show him off screen, watching the commercial back, and he questions, was that too much? Did I just exaggerate too much or overdo it with the accent or whatever? And the, over the shoulder, Giuseppe and or Charles Martinet overhears him and says, No, it was a fantastic wahoo! Or whatever he said at the end. But it's clearly him. So paying respect to like what Mario used to look like in Jumpman, the very, very first game he showed up in with Donkey Kong and all that. And apparently he was the voice of Papa Mario, which it's funny because you hear him a couple of times speaking Papa Mario, but I couldn't really tell if that was Charles or not. But apparently everywhere I read, it was. <laughs> so there was that to think about. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a cool tip of the hat to Charles, you know. The OG, been doing it so long. There was a lot of backlash because of uh, Chris Pratt being cast of all people for Mario. My final consensus of it, honestly, I was fine with it. I was cool. 
I liked him doing it actually. And I had that feeling it'd be fine too because he didn't do terrible. There were some parts where it's like, uh, that's cr- a little too Chris Pratty on the nose, but then otherwise, he had the faint Brooklyn accent going. It was convincing enough, and it was fun. I enjoyed him. I believed him. I, for, let's say, 80% of the film, I forgot Chris Pratt was voicing Mario. Legit. There was, again, some points where it comes out like, ah, oh, that's kind of too Chris Pratty, but otherwise, it was fine. I was happy with it. Overall, everybody, too. So, you know, there was nothing to be afraid of. At the end of the day, too, there's a lot of backlash from critics who simply don't understand that there is no lore to go off of when it comes to the Mario games, let alone a movie. And anybody waiting for this movie, myself included, many adults, children, whatever, we knew to not expect the story. We just wanted to see Mario on the big screen, and we got it this time finally the right way it should have been the first time it really should have been animated the first time yeah technically whatever computer graphics 1993 but this was animated this was done just right how it should have been done the first time around and i feel that even though there really is no story no lore no sense really to mario and any of the games existing we don't play for that shit we played the same fucking premise so many times over mario saves peach bowser kidnapped peach in another castle, in another world, all this, all that, whatever, we're used to it, and we're fine, because there really doesn't need to be a story, it's silly enough, two plumbers from Brooklyn get sucked into a warp pipe into the Mushroom Kingdom to fight uh, an oversized dinosaur turtle, whatever the fuck Koopa is, or Bowser is at the end of the day, who now has been simping over this whole time a human princess that he does capture and kidnap, but just can't convince her to marry him, And that's the whole premise of saving her ass from him, from his clutches, right? But so many people getting upset about, you know, oh, there's no real story. It's not fleshed out. It's not developed. I don't get it. I don't understand. You can say that about a lot of other movies that like pay homage primarily to the source material. But this one was really one of those where it really stayed loyal and loved the source material so much. I think this time because Nintendo was apparently way more involved in the making of this one compared to 1993 because from what I read, it seems like Miyamoto and and all of them weren't that involved. They just sold the rights and said, okay, go ahead and kind of go crazy and shit and ended up getting what they got. Uh, Allegedly, one of the directors said, because I think it was two directors, a uh, married couple that made the first one, the 93 version, that said, oh, we showed it to Miyamoto before it released and he was okay with it. He actually liked it and shit, which I'm going to call, well, no pun, cap on that. But I, I don't know. It, it just seems so weird that Nintendo would have been more involved than the first one. And this one, it was obvious they were heavily involved. No question at all, they were heavily involved. And that Miyamoto wouldn't have let any version sure of the one that made it to theaters come out at all which is good you know because it kept loyal to the source material a lot of shit did make sense and literally it's the kind of thing i would have loved to see on screen 30 years ago but i'm not going to complain that it took that long to finally come out now because i honestly think this movie was great it was a great service to mario fans such as myself of a certain age it kept kids really exciting the theaters when i went to go see it they were jumping they were laughing they all wanted to be little fucking marios and luigi's afterwards so mission accomplished in that sense but yeah this this thing really got a lot of backlash surprisingly and unjustly i'm gonna say because even seth rogan himself the voice of donkey kong who did i'd say just fine you know it, i always saw once he got announced as donkey kong i saw Seth Rogen's laugh fitting Donkey Kong just fine. But even he said himself about the OG version, the one from 1993, Seth Rogen said, quote, it really bummed me out. I was so disappointed. I think it made me realize that movies, like, could be bad. That never occurred to me until that moment. Now, is there any real need for him to say that at all about the first movie, considering he's casted for the, hopefully, seemingly, and now confirmed since it's released in theaters, new and improved version of the Mario's movie? Yeah. It's not really deserved, but he has a right to say that because it really is that bad. It really is so far from what anybody would have imagined 
seeing in the theaters, let alone envisioning Mario to be on the big screen in 1993. Again, just some years removed from the actual release of the game, Mario World, Mario 3, all these classic games we loved and heralded so much up until now. What the fuck did we get on the big screen when 1993 rolled around? Like I mentioned on IG, and I think I mentioned in the last episode, I got beat for watching the first one in theaters because I made my mom watch it with me. She bought the, mo uh, the movie tickets. We watched it. She was so confused and or offended. I don't know what till this day, but she beat me in the fucking aisle way as soon as we left the theaters. And that's enough said about that too. But then of course, you can't fucking have something good, shiny and new without someone trying to poo poo all over it or just be a dick. Because guess what? John Leguizamo, the Luigi of old from the 1993 version of all fucking idiots, has a problem, of course, with the brand new Super Mario Bros. movie, which he is thinly veiling under the cause of, oh, there's no, there's no Latinx representation in this movie because now he's boycotting this movie of all things. Of all things fucking Leguizamo, right? You couldn't even be the best part of a terrible movie. You weren't the saving grace. You weren't the one fucking exception to the rule of pretty much set in stone. The Super Mario Brothers movie from 1993 is terrible. Whoever you fucking ask. Even people that go back and watch it often for whatever reason. They admit it's a guilty pleasure because of how bad it is and how stupid it is. Leguizamo couldn't even outshine the rest of the cast. Because guess what? At least, rest in peace, Bob Hoskins would have been fucking great as the voice of Mario had he still been living till today. But even he fucking complained about the movie. He even said the fucking directors were idiots at some point too. And of course, Leguizamo has to fucking chime in with now just representation and there's no Latinx presence in the fucking movie, which makes no sense because they're all Italian. Why would there be fucking Spanish representation? But again, he says, quote, they messed up the inclusion. They could have included a Latin character like I was groundbreaking. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Quote, they messed up the inclusion. They disincluded. Not a word, but okay. What can you expect from this fucking moron? Just cast some Latin folks. We're 20% of the population. The largest people of color group and we are underrepresented. There's no Spanish fucking characters in the Mario universe. Why the fuck force or wedge in somebody that's not represented in the first place in any of the games into fucking the goddamn movie? So what? What did he want? Did he want fucking Wario included in him for him to be Spanish? What about Wal Waluigi? Oh, I don't know, Daisy? Daisy's been, I think, implied to be Spanish, but then she wasn't in this one. Maybe she'll be in the next one. And then maybe then they'll, they'll hint at her being from, like, uh, I don't know, Sevilla or, or Spaniard or something like that, too. But it doesn't fucking matter, you idiot. All in all, I, I'm going to call, again, no pun, Cap on Leguizamo being upset and wanting to boycott the movie by them not paying homage to either him or not tapping him to at least get one, two lines in quickly and get the quick, easy, lazy fucking payday for like was I'm of all fucking idiots. But all in all, I'm really happy with the end result myself as, you know, but also guilty. I'm a fan of fucking Mario from like the age of five, pretty much. Up until now, I play the games proudly. I do the fucking cosplays. You can see it, the hat in my head. I got no shame there. So I had to give it a score. I'm going to say, honestly, this is probably like a one out of a two. I'd probably get us a one leaning towards a one and a half out of two. I really had fun watching this movie. It's so quick. That was a pleasant surprise, but kind of unexpected too. how quick it passes you by everything that unfolds. And it left me wanting more, actually. So... I might end up saying, for me at least, a 1.5 out of 2. I'm not going to say one of the greatest animated things ever. But as far as, like, video games are concerned, I think the best video game movie media probably out there now. Let's see what the sequels, which we're not going to be able to skip the sequels. Let's see what the sequels have in store for us as far as the Mario universe is concerned. Let's just get a goddamn Star Fox movie, a Metroid movie, 
a Zelda movie and or series, something like that, dude. There's so much fucking to do with all those characters and, and, and titles and brands. What are you waiting for, Nintendo? Now you've got the open door. Batten down the hatches. Open the gates. Yo, it's over. All right, it's over. It's over. Move the mic. Move the mic. Thank you. All right.